Welcome to Le Grand Voyage with Chateau Malartic La Gravière. Humphrey Bradley isn't a name many people know, but without him, we wouldn't be drinking many of the wines of Bordeaux we enjoy today. Humphrey was an Englishman, we think, although his wife and children were Dutch. He wasn't a winemaker, or a grape grower, or particularly linked to Bordeaux, and yet he changed everything for the region. Humphrey Bradley was a drainage engineer. He'd worked on drainage projects in England around the River Great Ouse and the Neen Valley near Cambridge. He once proposed draining all the Norfolk Fens and had planned an expansion of Dover Harbour, but in 1596 he was appointed Master of Dikes of the Kingdom of France. This job gave him a monopoly of all the diking and land reclamation work throughout the country, and one of the projects he oversaw was in the Medoc, a rather sorry area of marshland not far from Bordeaux city. Until the 16th century, the palace marshes of the Medoc weren't known for the rolling vineyards we see today. They were sauvage et solitaire, wild and lonely. It was a place without roads, accessible only by boat. Those boats would dock at the little harbours in the outcrop villages of Margaux, Saint-Julien, Poyac and Saint-Estephe, tucked into the marshes. These weren't winemaking villages, they were fortress towns to protect the waterways in the Hundred Years' War. Draining these marshes was a huge project. It was eventually taken on by a Dutch engineer, Jan Adrian Joon Leerwater. His name was his calling card. Jan was originally called Jan Adrian Joon, but he was a famously vain and boastful man. He assumed the name Leerwater, or Low Water, presumably as some sort of nominative determinism, a bit like me joining the fire service and calling myself Joe Flamequasher. After enjoying initial success in the region, teams of Dutchmen installed ditches known as Les Jailles to drain the water. You can still see them today. They separate the various winemaking communes. What they revealed were gravelly soils, perfect for winemaking, and frankly, not a lot else. It was so successful that the drainage was followed by a period of frenzied vine planting, described at the time as Fureur de Planté. We can see the impact on the region in the diaries of an English traveller, a guy called Arthur Young. He described visits to this part of France later in the century. He described the hectic pace of change, the plantations, teams sinking wells, the impact of drainage, irrigation, all fixing the unstable gravels and sands and turning this marsh into valuable land. He explains how earlier in the century the land had been sold au son de la voie, it was the standard measurement, and it was the range of a set of human lungs, the stretch of ground that could be reached by a man's voice, and it sold for just a few francs. Now that same land had become some of the most valuable vineyards in the country. In fact, it's debatable whether many of the greatest vineyards in the region would have developed at all without the Dutch, although that wasn't their original purpose. The original idea was just to create more wine, to compete with the wines of Portugal going to England and elsewhere, including Holland. But what emerged from the marshes were some of the most highly prized vineyards in the world. In Bordeaux today, a hectare of land in Poyac will cost you an average of about 2.2 million euros, and it's rising every year. Even some of the less prized sites in the Medoc will sell for 55,000 euros for effectively a football pitch of land. It's a far cry from a few francs for land as far as your voice would carry. Join me again tomorrow when we'll be talking more about those highly prized vineyards with Le Grand Voyage. See you then. <laughs>